Celebrate. 
sing this song, I got a reason to shout. Well, I've got a reason to shout.
Christ is my reward.
of everlasting life, we give you praise and we give you glory. Praise Amen. You. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's pray for a few uh, prayer requests this morning. Amen. We're going to pray first for Pastor Mitchell and uh, Pastor Morales. Amen. Prescott, Arizona. Let's also pray for our uh, leaders in the East Coast, yeah. Pastor Campbell, Pastor Ganeer. Can we also lift up the Suspanskis and uh, uh, Pastor uh, Wayne and Alicia King. Amen. Let's pray for my pastor, uh, Pastor Keith and Carrie Sullivan. Let's yeah. also remember Mike and Mary Harris. They had a great outreach last night. Let's pray for the church in Brockport to prosper, to be in health and strength and in growing. Amen. Let's also uh, remember what God is doing here in Greece. Amen. We're going to pray for some uh, separate prayer requests here. This is for Ryan and Lauren. Need Holy Ghost direction. Ogorati is recovering from uh, blood clots and uh, cracked ribs. Let's also pray for Nate and Angelina. Amen. Amen. At a wedding this morning. Amen. Let's pray for God's help to their lives. Yes. Amen. Joshua Cole and uh, Eric Brownlee and family. Let's pray for a woman by the name of uh, Sarah Needs Miracles, Barry and Annie. Let's also pray for uh, police and firemen here in Rochester and all our first responders. And uh, let's pray for those who were left behind in Afghanistan. Let's pray for God to move somehow miraculously to get those people out. Amen. Let's pray for Joe and Kim. God's blessing and revelation and a family from Lowell, Massachusetts, the Gonzalez family. Amen. Perhaps there's a need in your life that I did not mention. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand as a sign to me and to God. That we're going to pray together. We're going to believe you, sister. God's going to bless your brother. And those who are listening online, God's going to answer your prayer. Amen. We're studying this scripture in Ephesians 3. God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. Let's let God have his way in our lives. Let's believe God for outrageous things, impossible things. Amen. Let's make a, a request to God for the miracles that he wants to perform and let his will be done. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray. Brother David, can you open us up? Let's pray, church. God, we thank you, God, for miracles, God, your promises uh, in Christ Jesus are yea and amen, God. Uh, you uh, are going to save and you're going to do miracles and wonders that we cannot comprehend, Lord God, the height and the depth, uh, God, and God, the distance that you will travel, God, the, the ends that you will meet, Lord God, to save souls, God, have compassion on people, meet all these families' needs, Lord God, we pray for miracles in the East Coast, God, to open up the doors of revival here, God, move in Greece, New York, God, save families, uh, couples, move in neighborhoods, Lord God, powerfully deliver from sin, God, we thank you for your promises, uh, our trustworthy God, we look to you as author and finisher of our faith, Lord God. Help us this morning to be we more than you, conquerors. Jesus, we don't have to go by what Eat we see. Those, we Lord. thank yes. you, Lord, that we can go by what you told us and hang on to you and your We thank you, Lord, that your power is not diminished at all. You can do anything. All we need to do is hear your voice. And we, ask, we, we know you have spoken to us. We ask that you continue to speak to us so you can bring us to pass according to the way you want to do it, Lord. Because we're here to serve you. We ask you, Jesus, to glorify yourself, manifest your presence in Greece, get the people saved who can be saved, Lord. We ask you in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Let's take a minute to greet one another and make everybody feel welcome this morning.
can happen at any second. Amen. Amen. We believe God for the impossible things, the outrageous things. Amen. And uh, we want to welcome you to Grease Potter's house where Jesus is con in control. Amen. A few announcements for the local church, and that is that we'll be back tonight at 5.30 for prayer and 6.30 for evening service. Amen. And Wednesday we have a midweek service uh, at 7.30. 6.30 is our prayer time. Amen. Come and get a hold of God with us. Amen. Find out what God is doing and then do it with all your heart. Amen. That's my advice for today. And uh, we'll be back again on Saturday for outreach at 11. If you'd like to help us, we're going to go outreach, evangelize, tell people about Jesus, and simply invite them to church. Amen. We also want to remind you about 10 o'clock adult Sunday school and 1030 is our morning worship. If you're listening online, we're going to encourage you to get to church, get into the church building, get to the assembly of the living God. Those are the called out ones, the ecclesia. And make your way to church. Amen. There's going to always be some excuse that will come up. You got to do your laundry. You got to walk the dog. I don't know. What, but <laughs> praise God. He's here and he, he wants to really get you into fellowship. And that is with other human God, beings. Don't we don't want that <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. A couple announcements here also to keep in mind. And that is that uh, uh, this Upcoming Saturday, we're going to have Neon Lights, which is an original rock opera that's going to be performed here in the Grease Potter's House. And there's a thousand tickets on the back shelf if you want to help hand them out. If you can make it, uh, you want to help be involved during the day. We're going to outreach for a few hours and uh, take a lunch and then uh, go back out and uh, make sure everybody gets set up here. There's two shows, one at 7 and then one at 8.30. It's going to be a tremendous gospel message. Ministry and anointed play uh, as a musical with singing and some tremendous acting. I want to encourage you to come to that on the 11th, which is this Saturday. We also have a marriage retreat the 17th and the 18th of September, the following week. Amen. We're already into September. Amen. Where did the summer go? Some of you are asking. It went by like so fast. And so let's go ahead and change the order of our service. We'll take up our offering. Amen. Acts 19, verses 23 through 27. This is an expensive revival that happened. About that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity in this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned people away from that uh, saying, there are no gods that are made with hands. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of this great goddess Diana. So we have a story here. Uh, the scripture records how Paul is preaching throughout the area and uh, he's preaching that people should turn away from worshiping idols and things. And these people are highly offended. We know that God is a spirit and must be worshiped in spirit and truth. So here we can also take it a step further and think about our prosperity. God has blessed you, amen, and I because he's compassionate and he's able to do these things above and beyond what we think he can help you in your finances he's given you a place to live he's given you food clothing a nice house and amen richly blessed you on multiple occasions let's give to god this morning amen and give to god out of a heart of just gratitude amen not relying on ourselves or looking to material possessions, but let's trust in the living God. Can I ask the usher to come forward? Let's trust in Jesus and let's give to God this morning, amen, with hearts that are generous, amen, because God is prosperous. God has met all our needs. And then Brother David. We thank you, Lord, for calling us. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us into fellowship. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share what you've given us back to you so that you can use it for your How you have this all under control. Our job is just to trust you as you reveal it to us. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for doing that. Amen. Praise 
Yeah, thank you for your giving. Amen. If you'd like to give online, amen, you can click the link. I've got a reason to shout, and I was in darkness till God brought me out, and I'm here to testify and tell you about my wonderful reason. I've got a reason. Well, I've got a reason to shout, and I was in darkness till God brought me out, and I'm here to testify and tell you wonderful reason to shout we've been through the fire we've been through the flood he's been by my side when you got God when you got God you gotta know that I've got a reason to shout and I was in darkness till God brought me out Amen. Thank you for those on the platform and those who are helping out behind the scenes. We greatly appreciate your assistance. Amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to Ezra 4. We're going to start with one verse of Scripture, verse 2. Evil influence is like a nicotine patch, one man wrote. You cannot help but absorb what sticks to you. The only people you have to look out for in life are the people who they, they don't even care about themselves. They don't care about anything or anyone. These are the people that wind up teaching your children sometimes. Always be careful of where you run to and who you run with. Amen. Ezra 4 verse 2. Then they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do also. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Asaharadan, king of Assyria, who brought us here. Amen. I've entitled this sermon, Building on God. Let's pray. God, we thank you for your scriptures. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives. God, give us wisdom with our choices and our decisions. God, how to build ourselves up and God, be glorified in our lives through your direction, through your inspiration, and through the foundation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Each and every one of us here, we need to build ourselves. We need to, to have our lives built up and helped and edified. But because of our past, amen, everything good has been destroyed. Our innocence is gone. Our money has been wasted and our relationships have been burned. We find ourselves in a place of just destruction. Normally when we come into the church or we finally get saved, we see the wreckage of our lives and we realize we need to build ourselves up because everything that we put our hand on has fallen to pieces and has been deconstructed, let's say. Building your life will take a lot of work and a lot of energy and a lot of patience. Amen. Successful businesses just don't happen. I mean, it's just not a gamble when somebody starts a business and they're looking to become successful. There's a lot of planning that goes in to building a business and building your life also. You just don't follow any random plan. You're not going to just wing it. A lot of people 
don't have any plans on building their lives. There might just be uh, quality materials and uh, these are used in building your life. There must be quality lumber. I guess the price of lumber has gone up, right? I remember picking through a pile and it took me like an hour to find four nice sticks of two by fours. They're not straight, they're all ragged, and the price has gone up. It's not even, it's not even funny anymore. Think with me for a second here. You would never build a car out of plastic unless you're building a little model car. You would never build a house out of papyrus or paper, or balsa wood, unless it was a third grade school project. You would never build a career out of a social position like Paris Hilton. Yeah. Anybody know what she can really do? Does she have any secret talents? I could tell you, but I can't tell I you saw, in public. I saw one uh, video, she was singing a song, and I mean, you can't build a career out of something you have no talent, no intelligence, nothing special, nothing above what other people have. What are you building your life out of? I mean, it's easy to look, you know, point the finger to their people. But if you're not building your life, then you're probably dead in here. Or you soon will be dead. There's no growing going on in your life. Your life is not improving. Or it's not becoming any better. There's really no growth in your life to speak of. And then perhaps you're just a, a consumer in life. That means you're eating things around you, you're digesting, you're having experiences, you're having fun, you're partying. You're looking for more and more greater experience. You have more, we're planning more vacations, you're buying more things. Amen. We need to secondly look at the errors that are involved in building. There will be an opposition to you building your life. Most people think that they're building their lives on good decisions. They might have chosen to go to school. We're not opposed to getting an education. Uh, or maybe, um, you know, go for a college degree. It's not evil, but it's not the answer to build your life completely. Amen. They may have graduated from college. You may have started a career thinking that you're building your life up. And this is good, but it's not everything. Amen. Maybe you're about to get married. Maybe you have a significant other a boyfriend or a girlfriend or a fiance, maybe you've even proposed. You've got a plan. But marriage is not the end. And then you, maybe you've started to have a family too. You want to have kids. <coughs> you're building, you're thinking, you know, these are good decisions, but this is not all that there is. This is not a, uh, the end in itself. Amen. We need to have a spiritual background. <coughs> and that can be found and learned through the scriptures. And today we're looking at Ezra 4. It says that they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, let us build with you. They're trying to win their confidence. They're trying to get into what's happening there. And we have to be very careful about who we are building with. God judges Israel and uh, lets Babylon drag them off into captivity. So they've been in captivity or slavery, let's say. They've been taken away from their homeland. And for 70 years, they've been serving the king of Babylon. And King Cyrus comes along. He makes a decree. He says... All peoples can go back home and build their lives, build their temples, worship their gods. And the Jewish people, some of them, many of them, most of them, came back to Jerusalem to rebuild that place that had been razed, 
that had been destroyed, that had been burned. Amen. The altar was completely destroyed. You can read earlier how Nebuchadnezzar uh, attacked Jerusalem and they, they pulled the stones down and the walls uh, and they burned the timbers and they uh, and annihilated the, the temple and the altar was desecrated. There was nothing left. They really did a number on that. This is all because of the Jewish people, they lost their confidence in God. They decided uh, that church was not enough. There's got to be more to it. God's not going to really care if I go and screw around, dabble over here and mess with this. I know I've heard good preaching. I know I've been warned. I know uh, there's been prophecy. I know that I shouldn't be doing this, but I don't care. I just want to play around for a while. And this is why they were judged. This is why the altar was destroyed. This is why the temple was brought down. Amen. And the walls were removed. Zerubbabel here in our scripture, he was in charge of rebuilding the altar. We also learn from other scriptures that Ezra is involved in um, rebuilding the temple. And Nehemiah was in charge of rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem. Some of them overlapped each other. But the priority was rebuilding the altar. And for you and I, we need to keep in mind there will always be a resistance to your progress as a Christian. As you're trying to rebuild your life, amen, there's always going to be something that comes against you that's going to keep you back from growing, from the process of moving forward, whether it's Something inside of you that you're missing something. Or there's people outside that, that want to discourage you or mislead you. Or, amen, could be the devil himself trying to have a heyday. Trying to steal the glory from Jesus. There will always be a resistance to your rebuilding. If people can't directly stop you from going to church or stop you from reading your Bible, or stop you from praying. It's not a law yet, but it could be one day. You're not going to pray. If they can't just stop you, then what I've learned in 35 years, that they will somehow try to have an influence over your faith and become a nuisance to your growing, your... your um, living for God and your, your life is changing. They're going to try to get into you and try to convince you that they are there to help you. They're, they want to help you build your life. They know it's a good idea. Number five, if you seek God, my friends, then... Why haven't you started building Jerusalem? These people say, We're, we've been here for years. And, you know, we've been giving offerings and we've been sacrificing since you've been. God doesn't say who he's been sacrificing to. But they're saying that, you know, we love God just like you. We want to worship God just like you. So my question is, why haven't... Uh, they started rebuilding Jerusalem. They weren't making any attempts to do that in our scripture here. And I use that to say this. They could have spent some money. They could have been rebuilding uh, the temple, the walls. But all of a sudden, people will come out of the closet and uh, they'll say to you, didn't you know that I was a Christian? And you're going to have to be, you know, honest with you. I really didn't know. I couldn't tell you were a Christian. Well, that's good. Good. Praise the Lord, right? And uh, they're like, no, not really. They're not really Christian. Especially with that mouth of yours. I don't think that you are a Christian. Or with the jokes that you're paying. Or the way that you're living. You never told me you went to church. So I'm here to tell you, I want to give you a, a small warning that some people 
will try to step in and play Holy Ghost. They'll try to step into your life and begin to get you to think their way. The devil is very evangelical. And he will come and try to twist things around and get you to not build on God. You know, the devil, thirdly, opposes. And uh, he will use people sometimes to keep you from building your life. The truth is the devil does not want you to build your life. He wants you to keep suffering in your old life, your old sin, your bad decisions. It's so easy to rest uh, on the old processes in our mind as we were confronted with a problem and we solved it this way. Or uh, put your money problems on a credit card. That's the easy way out and I'll pay it later. I'll, you know, Or relationship problems. You know, we choose to do things that are not out of God's order and we miserably fail. Satan knows that if you choose to rebuild on God's ways, then you will be powerful. And building on God, amen, is what we need to do as Christians. Amen. amen. Some people are very dangerous, and it's obvious. So there's maybe people that you see in the street, you would never let them babysit your your children, right? Yep. <laughs> and it's obvious. There's people that are smoking and drinking and cussing and fornicating. And you would never ask them advice on how to live a clean life, how to be pure. Or somebody who's been divorced, you know, give me some marriage tips. Right? You would never do that. It's obvious. But the devil is very subtle. He's very shifty. He's very crafty. Amen. Here's a disclaimer of balance now. So I'm trying to get you guys to think about there may be people that come into your life that want to help you build your life back up and they may not really have your best interest at heart. Amen. That's basically the gist of the sermon if you haven't gotten it yet. But I want to give a little disclaimer here and a balance to it. This is not a witch hunt. Everybody who comes into your life there may be other people that can help you spiritually to build on God. That's what I want you to think about. It's true, but not to everyone who's not for you is against you. Jesus here, in the balance of this scripture, he, bit, he forbids uh, sectarianism. That means dividing uh, the church. Verse 49, now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name. And we forbade him to do that because he does not follow us. But Jesus said to him, do not forbid him for he who is not against us is on our side. I want you to just keep this in mind that, that there may be some people that uh, will be able to help you. Many people have a different belief system than you do. And you have made choices and uh, different decisions create results. But who will you associate with? Amen. Where do you take your lead from? You have to be careful about who you're listening to. Amen. You do not want to, to listen to religious people. Amen. They do not seek God like you seek God. The religious people I'm referring to in, in the scriptures here in Jesus' time were the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were religious. They had a form of godliness, but they denied his power. They had faith, but only in their laws and their traditions and all their rules. They had no care or love for people. So for you today and me also, be very careful when people pop up in your life and they want to help you. Sometimes they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Amen. Very dangerous and uh, some, something to, to be aware of. Amen. So 
They said, uh, we want to seek God as you do, as you do. We sacrifice just like you. We're building on God. Building on God is more than worshiping idols. And because their sacrifices were not pure, they had different gods that they were sacrificing to, not to Jehovah, not to the Lord. Amen. And we learn from Scripture that obedience is better than sacrifice anyways. Just doing what God wants you to do is better than, uh, you know, throwing $100 in the, in the offering plate or doing good, doing good deeds. But just obeying how God tells you to do something, to go ahead and do it. Alakot's commentary says, as you do. It says here that they feared the Lord and worshiped their own gods. 2 Kings 17, 33. Thus, they came either in the spirit of hypocrisy or hypocrites, or with an intention to unite their own idolatries with the pure worship of Jehovah. In any case, they are counted enemies of the God of Israel. That's why Zerubbabel said, back off, Jack. You ain't helping us. This is for us, the Jewish people. Amen. You would never take advice from your enemy. They will mislead you and give you misinformation to weaken your abilities and take away your spiritual dominion and eventually defeat you. You got to be careful who you're going to link your heart with. Yeah. Because they don't have your best interest in mind. And then Strong's says of verses four, uh, chapter four, excuse me, verses one through five, every attempt to revive true religion will stir the opposition of Satan and of those in whom he works. The adversaries in this scripture here were Samaritans who had been uh, planted in the land of Israel I believe it was the kings would take some people from a certain area in their own country, Assyria, and they would plant them into uh, Israel somewhere. Like pilgrims or uh, just a group of people. I don't know. There, there, there's a, 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 an exact word that is slipping my mind. but So they're, they're living and they're not really Jewish. They're not part. They're not pure. They're not part of that uh, situation. It was planned and did not mean to unite in the worship of the Lord according to his word. Let those who discourage a good work and weaken them that are employed in it see whose pattern they follow. Very careful how we build. We have to watch the pattern that we follow. The devil will use anyone he can to deceive you and get you off track give you carnal advice and lead you away from God. Amen. The devil is using people right now in your life that are seemingly harmless. It may be loved ones. It may be friends at work. It may be your family. Sowing discord and confusion and distraction Used to slow your progress. Amen. You know, God's plan is to make you saved and to fill you with the Holy Ghost, make you fruitful. Amen. Gill's exposition here says, which proposal at first sight might seem very agreeable and welcome, and would have been so if it had been sincere, but they were not. They hoped uh, by getting among them that they could sow discord among them. And uh, disunite them so that by these and other means to have retarded the building. In other words, slow down the process of building the altar. Impede the progress of building the temple back up. And, and then finally the walls around Jerusalem to protect them. That was their goal. To trip them up. Slow them down. Or if it went forward, they might have a claim to it as theirs. We were here first, at least to set up their own idols in a part of it. And the reasons they gained were following. 
So those worshiped God and a thousand other gods. They had something called idol worship. It was mixed. They had a little bit of God, the Lord, a little bit of Jehovah, and then a little bit of the God of mammon, the God of money, the God of materialism, or some different gods. They mixed it together. And this is where you and I get in trouble because we're not uh, with the understanding that there is, God is a jealous God. And he doesn't want it to be mixed together. He wants to be sitting on the throne of your heart by himself. Amen. If it's mixed, there's going to be confusion. There's not going to be any uh, solid foundation to your building of your life. This is religion at its most dangerous, dangerous level. You have, have you ever read Proverbs where it says that, you know, the woman, she's she's wiping her face and she's saying, I have done no wrong. She's a prostitute. Yeah. There's another scripture that says, come. She's talking to the, the dumb uh, victim. She says to him, come, I, come sleep with me tonight. My husband has gone away. I paid my religious vows. <laughs> Let's party, man. So, so the devil wants to get into church. He wants to confuse people and mix religion or worship of God with worship of the devil, worship of Satan. He's very crafty. Your enemies will never present themselves openly to you, but by guile and deception, they will try to get an advantage in your life. Not everyone who says they are a Christian are. Oh, no. Billy Sunday said going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going into a garage makes you a car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have to be careful where we get our advice from. Amen. I'm going to look at uh, four examples here. Direction, counsel, marching orders, and vision. Firstly, let's look at direction. We have to be careful where we get our direction for in life. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. I believe that's in 2 Timothy. So we know that God is going to direct us through his word, through the Bible. I tell every new convert, pray and read your Bible. That is going to be the building tools, the materials you need to become successful as a Christian. Read your Bible. The Bible is going to teach you everything you need to believe. Secondly, you can get counsel, amen. Your pastor, there's other godly people that God has put in your life to help you to grow as a Christian. God can use your church to help you become more spiritually mature. Amen. God can use your church to give you an opportunity to be used. There's ministry that you can have in the church. Amen. Whether that's uh, doing ushering or praying or maybe playing an instrument, going on outreach. You know, God wants to mature you, amen, as you're going to church. Thirdly, we have marching orders. God has given you and I a mandate from heaven on how to live our lives, how to live victoriously, how to build our salvation. Amen. And how to build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We have it. Go and be fruitful. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of going. The Holy Ghost is going. Be fruitful. Win souls. Become fishers of men, Jesus taught. Plant the gospel seed into people's hearts so that they can also get saved and Lastly, amen, we need to think about our vision. We get our advice, amen, through the Bible that puts it all together so we can see where we need to be going as a church. We need to have a vision of what's important. We need to prioritize things in our life and things in this church. What parts of the Bible do we believe are emphasized that will 
determine your vision that will form it, that will shape it, that will clarify it. Evangelize, disciple, learn, help people to uh, change and help them to grow. And uh, we've decided to focus on planting churches also because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of go. I'd like to close this morning on building Amen. And that is building on God. If you are building your life on the thing that the world says works, then it will crumble. The world system is based on the temporal, the feel-good doctrines, the emotions. Many people are taught by education or media that your feelings and your emotions are uh, the truth. They will not lie to you. You can trust your feelings. Man, this is the worst idea that was ever propagated. Because our feelings lie to us, don't they? One day we feel good. Oh, next day we wake up uh, with a headache. And so now we don't believe God anymore. God, God has not promised those things. I've forgotten them because we're resting on our feelings, our emotions the temporary things, instead of building our foundation on concrete. This thing is made out of wood right here that I'm standing on. A truck might crush this platform, but this is concrete down here. This is a solid foundation here. Amen. We need to be careful how we're building, building on God. Something of a substantial foundation. And for the Christian, it's Jesus the Christ. Amen. As uh, the chief cornerstone. Amen. He is our foundation. What did Jesus say? He said uh, that uh, those who build their house on the sand, the storms of life will come and the winds will blow against that house. The rains will descend and the waves will pound against it and it will fall. It will be an utter waste. Those who build their lives on the rock that is like the house that's going to stand. The house is getting beat out by the wind as a hurricane, but it stands only because it's founded on a rock. These are the sayings of Jesus. This is what God has spoken to us. This is why scripture is so important to read and learn what the Bible says for us. We need to build our lives on God. When the Jewish people returned from the captivity, started to build, they didn't align themselves with the idol worshipers that were already there. They were rebelling against God and mixing in worship with other gods and other things. They built uh, things that did not glorify God. Amen. The uh, service and their faith was impure. It was mixed with just a little bit of something not God. And that is enough to destroy them. They built on things that would not glorify Jesus. But if we exalt God in our lives if we put him as our primary desire amen he will help us to build and build a sure foundation a lasting foundation a foundation that is going to last and a building that is going to glorify God it's going to be beautiful your life amen will be a life of function amen your life will be a life of beauty your house as it were that you are building you know, everybody would hear about it. The glory would not be shared with everyone, but God alone will get the glory because your life is successful now. Those other people will not have any part in it. Don't let them steer you away from God. In your life as you obey God, if you take your lead from preaching, from teaching, from Bible reading and devotions and prayer, as you enjoy the fellowship, of the saints in the church assembly. God will direct your efforts. Amen. You can rebuild your life and build it up God's way. 
And God's way is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will help you, will speak to you, will remind you what Jesus said. Amen. Building on Jesus. There's no other foundation that's laid. And I want to close briefly here. No other foundation is laid. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. Matthew 7 24. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Amen. The wise heed counsel. Didn't we preached that last week. Hear it means doing it. Amen. That will let God be glorified in your life. Matthew 21, Jesus said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures the stone in which the builders have rejected the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Isaiah 28, 16, Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. Amen. We can build on the Bible. Amen. Church, world, they don't preach spiritual truths like they used to. Everything is getting watered down if you listen to some of these preachers. The most famous ones are the most wishy-washy ones. They don't preach on sin. They don't preach on the rebirth. And they got some incredible numbers. They preach on uh, blab it and grab it doctrine that you can just get money if, and just become rich and wealthy. Those are the preachers who preach a worldly doctrine. Amen. A worldly influence. Preachers don't preach like they used to. And that world influence has made many Christians religious also. Amen. Amen. We have to be careful who we're listening to. Who we're building on. Amen. Are we building on Jesus? We have to be careful about who is going to affect us. Who is going to influence us. Amen. Let's close our eyes and bow our heads. I want to thank everybody for coming. You faithful people here, precious Christians that want to do God's will. Amen. And maybe you're not saved, though. Maybe you've never committed your life to Jesus. You've never been born again. You've been building on the sand. You could say your life has been built on a weak foundation, amen. And when you try to do things with your life, you make mistakes, you make bad choices, who you're hanging out with, the things that you're ingesting, maybe you got into uh, drugs or immorality, and you find your life is just, just, is just destroyed and because of sin. I mean, God wants to save you. And give you a new life, but you have to be born again. John 3 3 says you must be born again. And then being born of the Spirit, being born of water, being born again, being born from above. Amen. Where God, you let God into your heart, let Jesus give you a brand new life. The old things will pass away, all things become new to you. And then God loves you. He died for your sins. And on that cross, he shed his blood that you can be forgiven. And there's no forgiveness. There's no remission. There's no removal of sin from your life without the shedding of blood. It's not by works of righteousness. It's by his blood alone. And he's here for you today. He wants to save you. And uh, maybe you're backslidden. You've been brought up in church or you've been given all these wonderful things. And you've gone out there and you've squandered them. You have wasted your father's inheritance and now you're backslidden. You're not a Christian. Amen. You're not on your way to heaven. Amen. How many would you like to pray and change your life? Give your life to Jesus wholeheartedly. He will help you build your life back up. He will edify you. He's not into just squashing you, pushing you down, condemning you. 
But the spirit that you're feeling is the spirit of God. The Holy Spirit, and there's a conviction. He's showing you, yes, I have sinned. He's showing you, yes, I've done wrong. He's doing something inside of your conscience. He wants to cleanse you, give you help. I mean, how many would there be this morning who want to get saved, give your life to Jesus? You want to become a Christian, or you want to make that return? Amen, hallelujah. With an uplifted hand, anybody want to pray? We'll be glad to pray with you this morning, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God, maybe you raise your hand online, you're listening at a different time, and God's showing his love to you, he's revealing to you that you've been listening to the wrong people, you've been building on a world system, or on your flesh, or on your feelings. And this is a very weak condition very dangerous position that you put yourself into. And you want to pray, you want to give your life to Christ. I would like to lead you in a sinner's prayer. Amen. If you close your eyes, if that's you, bow your head and say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner and I am truly sorry for my rebellion, my bad decisions. Set me free right now from all these distractions and give me a pure heart. Give me a holiness. I ask you to come and live inside of me. I thank you this morning for your blood and the forgiveness of sins. I'm asking you for a miracle. Change me from the inside to affect the outside in the name of Jesus. I repent of all my wickedness, all my wicked thoughts, my disobedience. And I pray that you would help me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer, I'm going to ask you to contact us either by text or shoot us an email. Amen. We're located in the Sandwich Plaza. You need to come to church, man. Give your life to God and watch what he will do with you. Praise God. We're going to go ahead and change the order of the service for a Christian if you'd like to come forward and pray. Man, we're going to sing this song, How Great Is Our God.
tonight. Amen for our second service. Let's believe God for visitors tonight. Let's believe God for our faithful congregation, men, that we can feel uh, what God is doing, that God will uh, come down when we rejoice, and that he inhabits the praise of his people. Let's believe God tonight. Amen. And uh, David Bergson, can you pray for us so we can leave? Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you came and joined us here again this morning. Thank you, Lord, that your ways are always good, that all we have to do is trust you. We don't look around to see who's here or who's not, unless we oh, look around to see Lord. if you're here or not. And we thank you, Lord, for showing up. Thank you, Lord. We God. prepare for tonight, Lord. Who knows who you'll bring tonight, but we put ourselves in your hands. Yeah. Prepare us, Lord, so that we can minister to those who you sent. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Have a great day.